Well, it's time to carry on with this project. Got some more PCBs from PCB Way at no cost, so thank you very much, PCB Way, that's sponsoring me for this. I've already got one out. Got a quick look at it, make sure it looks okay. So we've got obviously a bunch of PCBs which I ordered, the 10. We've got a stencil in here. And a few stickers as well. I think there was already, already a pen in there, I think I already took that out. Um, so put this to one side. So again, thanks to PCB Way for sponsoring my video and uh, giving these to me at no cost for full disclosure, obviously. So this is the latest version of the board, and it's a little bit different. There we go. See, it's all enigged as well. So you've got gold plating on them. Helps the uh, corrosion resistance and that sort of stuff, and just keeps it all nice, especially with these binding post areas. Obviously for the solder there isn't really that big a deal, but for the binding post it does matter a little bit. So we've still got the resistor array. That's still the same. I've changed the values. I've gone to precision resistors this time. This is more of a precise version. Now this is very different to the previous one, which is very basic. And would work for most people, would be absolutely functional and absolutely fine, which is you know the idea of it is to be really cheap and easy and quick to use and reasonable results, which is what the target of that one was. So, what I'm actually doing is I'm probably going to do maybe another two videos, we'll see after this one with different variations of this board. We'll see, uh, I'm not settled on that yet. So, this one is also a prototype, I suppose, where I've done a completely different design on it. And you notice that it's not just a resistor array anymore, there's some other stuff over here. And another trimmer. Reason being is I've put a op amp on here. I've just got a generic Taylor 081D. I'm sure you can get probably better op amps or higher precision ones. That's just what I happened to choose because I wasn't really too fussed about it. I just wanted to chuck an op amp on it. And as they are generally the same pinouts, generally, um, you could always upgrade that to something better if you wanted to. Not a big deal. This does have nulling on it, which is why I chose this particular op amp. And they're cheap. <laughs> All right. And also, that's some capacitors over here. Yeah, it's because there's something going on in the back of the ball too, we'll get to that in a minute. So the idea of this is that we've got a different section. Now before it's just a passive divider. So it's feeding off the input voltage to feed the output. Okay, So it's scavenging power from it I suppose. As I showed in other videos, because of the issue with the input resistance of the meters you use this with, it can affect the voltage divider in this section. So if you put in say 10 mega ohms across this string, it changes the values very slightly depending on which string values you've got, of course. So what I've actually done here is I've gone to some precision resistors, better ones, more expensive, certainly a lot more expensive, compared to off-the-shelf generic parts, which is what I used in the first version. So this one, I've got out for three different types. So I've got 10 to 1, 100 to 1, and 1,000 to 1 ratios. That's what I've theorised about, about these values here. Obviously, we've got to try them out, and as you said, they really work. This is based on 3.6 meg, 1 meg, or 1 meg, depending on you know, the ratios and for that string here. Now the precision resistors I got were 1 meg because that's what is, I sort of showed up on the site, I couldn't get anything bigger than that strangely, I don't know, anyway. I, thought, I just got 1 meg, what the hell, we'll just do 1 megs. Then I've got the other string here which is going to be 430k or 11k or 1.05k precision resistors. So I've got some of these 1.05s to go with the 1 megs over here and also have the same arrangement over here with the trimmer for the tuning and another was just there. I moved, I moved it from the end to over here and shifted the trim back a little bit to make some room for this op amp over here. And so that's 1.2k in theory. We'll find out if my theoretical values are any good or not. I wasn't too far off last time, so we'll see where we are with this one. Bear in mind, I haven't built this up at all. I haven't, I haven't prototyped this. This, you know, I haven't even put on a breadboard. I've done nothing like that. <laughs> all I've done is theorised how to set this up. Now, well, the closest thing I've done is get the ball here. It's not completely true. Now over here I was playing around with get your focus with an op amp circuit as you can see and this was actually using Zener diodes to create a positive and negative rail from a single rail. So that's what I was doing on this thing. And I was playing around, I've got a capacitor here for smoothing and tidying up, get rid of noise, stuff like that. And this what was that one there, so yeah, UA741 op amp. So that's what I was playing with in that one. And I've done it on this one, also did this one up here as well, similar kind of deal, oh, I'm from that one, can't remember what it is, can't see it, and the lighting's not doing me any favours here. That's the most prototyping I'll do is play around with this and just check in voltage inputs and adjustment of the nulling and that sort of stuff, that's what I was playing around with, and see if I could use Zeners in order to get a good enough output, anyway the Zeners weren't reliable enough, if the input voltage changed a bit they also shifted off a bit and it wasn't really good enough, it kind of worked but not 100% happy with it, so that's the only prototype I actually did. 
So in theory the op amp should work. I haven't tried this particular op amp or this particular circuit arrangement so we'll find out. Now on the back of the board you have some more bits going on. We've got another IC over here. Now the reason that is that's um, a negative supply. Let's flip it over so you can actually read it maybe. It's an ICL 7660 IC which is a negative supply rail so it basically gets a positive rail flips it into a negative rail I don't know how accurate this is going to be I haven't even tried this I've got the chips I've got them all in here my bags over here somewhere and um, haven't tried it yet I saw uh, was it Learn Electronics yeah Learn Electronics used this particular device at the time as I was trying to build this design up I saw them use this device so, ah, that's exactly what I need that's perfect so I got some of those and designed it around that it's pure luck that he happened to do a video on that at the same time as I was designing this when I was trying to get a negative supply in a nice simple way and well yeah there's probably a better way of doing this uh, I don't know how noisy this is going to be for example I don't know what the quality of the output is going to be like and that sort of stuff so I don't know how noisy that's going to be on the output I've put some filtering on there quite a few caps around the place to try and make sure it is clean I'll see at the output over here and around this area I put a few caps on maybe overkill maybe it does actually need them I don't know and so basically what this is doing is that's just creating a negative supply rail for the op amp that's all it's doing and the op amp in theory will it be a buffer let's say uh, a one to one ratio so it's basically straight through but it's buffered so the input on here is really high resistance so whatever the, the string is set to will be what's um, put onto the um, op amp input and then it just loops back onto itself so it's got a one-to-one -one ratio, so it's straight through, basically, but buffered. So this has got a, I think, can drive some like 40 milliamps or something like that. I think it was. I can't remember exactly now. So it's got plenty of drive on it to drive a bit of test gear for, you know, across a 10 megaohm load or whatever. It's going to have much less reliance and um, effect from the meter you plug it into. In theory, I haven't tried it out yet. <laughs> so what we'll do is we we'll build this up. And I think what I'll do is I'll build this bit up first test this bit out because I haven't even tried this yet so I think I'll do the negative supply section build all that up I probably will populate everything apart from the op amp and these resistors here and then just in case it's complete rubbish and doesn't work or something <laughs> and then prove that supply is actually working and then I'll go from there I suppose this should be better but the other one I want to do the next version which I'll tell you about which I've got here somewhere Go and find the parts. These are the next versions I'm thinking about doing using Caddock resistors. So I've got these things here. These are a um, decade resistor array. So it divides by 10, 100, 1000, 10,000, something like that. And yeah, so this might be an, the next stage up, which is really high precision resistors. These are expensive. This is like, I don't know, well, I suppose it's probably about the equivalent cost of all the individual resistors of this board. It's similar kind of value, really. So, but the precision will be maybe better. Um, but limited supply. I mean, I don't know how limited the supply these things. Maybe you can get them easily, but the standard resistors are much easier to get. So that's why I've gone with this design to start with, and then I may adapt to this one. But there's also another resistor I've got here somewhere. If I can find the thing, where is it? I've lost it. Oh, there is a resistor here somewhere, which I have lost. It's like these, but it's a thousand to one ratio fixed divider. I've got it here somewhere. I don't know what I've done with it. <laughs> it's here somewhere. I hope I haven't lost it because it's hundred dollars for that thing. But that's why I haven't done that one yet. Anyway, we'll get on with this. In here is the stencil. I just opted to only get a stencil for one side of the board. So this is only for the top side. Now it's very similar to the previous stencil I had, but it's, obviously I've got extra bits on here. So, although the resistor section would actually be suitable on the other one, because none of that changed, apart from this bit, I need to add on the op amp and section and stuff like that. So I've all used a stencil to put those parts on. So yeah, thanks to PCB Bay for the stencil as well. So you can get the top stencil, bottom stencil, both stencils, it's up to you, you can choose them when you order it. Obviously you pay for the you know the cost of the stencils, whatever, whatever it happens to be. It's an option. It makes your job a little bit easier. Alright, so let's get this thing soldered up. Now what I'm gonna do because this is no stencil for this side, I'm gonna use just standard No, oh, that's not the right tip on there, is it? I think it's a bit big. Hmm. Let me fix this. Now I've got my tip. We'll try this again. So what I'm going to use is um, standard soldering iron tip. I'm going to use some leaded silver solder, which is my favourite solder. 
for doing precision stuff. And I'm going to just put solder on all of these pads I'm going to be soldering. Now I've got various capacitors around the place and those are the things I've added in to potentially help with noise. Obviously I could use paste and stick paste down and try and get it on each pad. I'm just going to do this. And then what I'll do is I'll use hot air to actually solder the chip down. Put some flux on it when I do the chip and I'll solder it down with flux. Okay, so I'm going to might as well put solder on these ones as well when I'm at it. And there's probably two. I'm likely to be using this board. I mean, it depends if the actual circuit works or not. Now, what I've also got up here is I've got three resistors which are marked on the board. You can see two of the little jumper pads, the little traces go through them. So those are op optional resistors, these three. Now, those are across the null trimmer. As I may need to tame down the null trimmer to reduce its range and that sort of stuff, I don't actually know what I'm going to find yet. So what I've done is I've put these optional resistors on here. So one is across the trimmer, which will reduce its trimming range. And I've got two in series as well, which can reduce the trimming effect. So it'll make it have less effect as well as less range. So I've got all those there as optional. I may or may not need those. I don't know yet. But that's I put them in there in case I needed them. We'll get some flux on here. We'll get the GICs out. And we'll get that put in. You can see the marking on here for the pin one. Got a little lump on the side there. So pin one's that top corner. So we'll get the ICs. We'll put that on first and we'll do the other parts around it. Now there's the ICs in here. ICL7660 SI Baz. These are the ones I chose. I didn't get many of these, but I'll just get a few and see how they go. In case they're not suitable or too noisy or something, I really don't know. Alright, so there's the IC and let's get some flux. So I want to make sure it solders nicely. So I'll heat this up with hot air, melt that into place, fingers crossed, and then I'll put some other I'll put these other capacitors on this side because I think it needs all those. And there's also some three-hole caps we've got to put on as well. Be on, I'm not sure, 40% air, well, maybe 40 litres of air actually, and 340 degrees. I'm doing here. Wasn't happy with this one, so I put some more flux on. I've got my decent tweezers, I'm gonna do some more. Let's get some capacitors out. So let's get these are 10 nanofarads. We should put those in. How do we need? Uh, three for the time being. I've got 220 over here as well. So, check those on there. I've got some 220s out. So I just want to get these ones placed before I get the 220s and get them all mixed up. Drop that one there. So they're using 0603 capacitors on 0805 pads. I like to keep my options open because 0603 will fit fine on 0805 pad. Um, that means you can use either then. If you just go to an 0603 pad, you can't use an 0805. I don't actually have many 0805 capacitors. I do have some, but not a huge amount. Those in now. What I think I need to do is the through hole capacitors, then I can voltage test. All right, so let's fit these. These are 10 microfarad 35 volt caps, so they're pretty much overkill, really, but they're nice and small and they're a good brand. So I'm not gonna add flux to see how it goes first, might be fine. Right, cleaned up, all good. Let's try it out, in case I've missed anything, I don't know. So I've got some various parts on here which I probably won't even use. So I'll point them out with my tweezers. They're here in case I need them. So here is C7, which is a, a 1 nanofarad. 
that's across the output that's there potentially to help reduce any possible noise also I've got a similar sort of thing over here across the resistor string to the output negative another little one nanofarad capacitor in theory potentially across there to help reduce noise in that string if I need them I, I don't plan on putting them in unless I need to it may or may not need them I think I've covered all that side so yeah that's all good let's power this up and see if we've got voltages on here like it should be right let's measure this thing so I've got myself set up here it's 10 power supply on I haven't done that yet so we want to go negative I've just what I've done is I've hooked up probes all right so I've got my multimeter here hooked up this blue loop going to my power supply so it's sharing a negative rail so I need to use one probe per meter so a ground point there and we've got the plus I've got five volts going in all right so plus five volts going on to there see that nice two pads there so I should now be able to measure over here on the op amp pins and see what we're getting. So we got, uh, which one's positive 5 volt? Was it that one? No, this one. There we go, 5 volts going in there. So that's fine. 4.998 is what we're getting, or 909, thereabouts. And negative is, well, I must think it's this one here. Here we go, 4.9934. So that's a fraction lower, but it's not bad, it's fairly well balanced. So that's okay. Now what I want to do as well is find out what voltage range I can use. I'm using 5 volts in, but ultimately this is going to be running off batteries. So let's see if we're going to be using about 4.2 volts down to about 3.2 volts from a single lithium cell, or double that. So let's just see what we can do. If we can get 3 volts out of this, then I know it's well within range. Let's go 3 volts here. Check it on here. We've got 3.001. 2.99... No, 3.001 as well. So that's looking really good there, actually. Reach on settle. So it looks like it will work right down to 3 volts. That's good. So I don't want to spec, so I think it went down to 2.5 volts or something like that. So let's just go down a bit lower. Let's go to 2 volts. Put that back in there. And see if we're still getting the voltage. There we go. 2 volts has collapsed. Go 2 volts there. Can't do it there. So let's just probe one here and just tweak the voltages and see what we actually can get out of it. Yeah, three probes at once in one hand, that's not bad, is it? So it's 2.2 volts, it works, 2.2 volts it works. So under this, you know, no load condition obviously. So I think 3.2 volts as well within its window of operation. So that's cool. So it means I can run this of a single lithium cell. Obviously, the lower the input voltage. The lower the upper voltage is going to be as well, don't forget. So, because I can only do if I'm only doing plus or minus, you know, if I've only got only a three volt supply, then the most you're going to get out of the op amp is going to be, you know, less than three volts. So, I don't know, what it would be, might be half a volt different or something. I'm not quite sure what the actual voltage um, threshold is there because it's not rail to rail op amp. But I'm only planning to go up to like one volt anyway, especially be using a one volt range. So, as long as I get one volt out of the op amp, that's all I really need to do. And what I'll do, once I've actually got the rest of the circuit built and I actually got hooked up properly, then I'll, I'll probe it with the oscilloscope and we'll see how much noise you actually have on these rails and see if it's actually a fairly quiet rail or not. Obviously right now the voltage looks about right, but how noisy is it? I mean I could do it now just to see what it is, but there's obviously no loading so it's not really going to give us a true result. Once I've got the op amp on there it might change it very slightly. So um, I'm inclined to wait until I've got the op amp on there before I do that check. Because even if it is bad now, it might get better when I've got the op amp on. So it's a bit doesn't really tell you that much. So anyway, we'll get on with the rest. Now, I've realised one little mistake I've made here. Because I put these through hole parts on here already, that means I can't put the stencil on. Because they're in the way. <laughs> so, yes, that's a bit of a pain. We'll see. Anyway, I don't know if I can get it. I don't think I'll get the, bend, the stencil to bend enough to actually get that job done. Uh, I don't really want to cut it either. Yeah, I don't know. I might be able to just get it, I suppose. I might be able to just get it by bending it. So that to capacitor over here, I'm not too worried about it anyway. It's like an optional one. I'm not sure I even need it. So I'm not too worried if I don't get that one on, but the main thing I'm worried about is this op amp here and obviously all the resistors. So the idea of using a stencil is obviously to I can stencil it. That was a bit of a silly thing for me to do, wasn't it? A bit of an oversight. Oh well. Well, I solved my problem. I cut a hole in a stencil. Well, I cut like a U shape and then folded it around underneath so it's out of the way. 
watch out for sharp edges if you do that sort of thing. Now I've got it aligned already, I could just paste that and that will work. Now, I'm not going to paste this piece because say, that's that optional capacitor, I'm not even sure I'm going to use that one yet. But I'll do is to paste all this. So we'll get that done, we'll paste that, spudge it out, and then we'll start placing components and see how we go. So we're going to get a lot of reflection I'm afraid because the lights, but uh, you know, can't do much about that. Well, if that's enough, we'll find out, I suppose. Check the line again, make sure it still looks alright. It does. I kind of need to hold it down the middle there, don't I? At the same time as I'm spudging it. I think I've got too much paste out this time. Okay, I think that's it. I think I wasted a bit, got too much of that. Never mind. There we go, wasted. Now I need to get some parts on here. Alright, so I'll start with the op amp, put that in. Then I'll do the resistors, place one of those up, and then we'll heat it up and so here we go. Now last time I used the um, hot plate to do this job. I think I'll do that again because the hot air is just going to blow everything around like it does. And um, we'll just do it that way. So we'll get the hot plate out and do that again with that. So there's that in place. And we'll sure do the same with all the resistors. So these are one meg resistors I'm using. These things here from RS Parts. Or RS Components. 0.1% rated. I think the 10 k was something like 25 ppm or 10 ppm, something like, I can't actually remember now. But um, yeah, it's certainly better than the standard resistors. Now these resistors are fairly expensive compared to standard ones, but these aren't, well, still aren't the best ones you can get, but um, you can certainly get better than this still, a lot more expensive than this. But uh, it's a step in the direction of expensive. A significant increase in cost. Significant increase in cost to have these resistors instead of the other ones. Instead of standard off the shelf normal parts, these ones are noticeably more. That's why you buy them in packs of five instead of a roll of a thousand. Well, you can, although you can get a roll of a thousand as well, <laughs> you know, whatever. Ten thousand a roll, I don't know. I hate to think how much that costs. I think these are something like two dollars each or something like that. They're fairly expensive. Or dollar each, I can't exactly now, but they're certainly a lot more expensive, so I need to get another pack of those. Drop in place. I'm going to try and bed them into the solder paste as well, see if it helps them to stop moving around, because what's happened before is when I was doing these, they um, would move around a little bit, because they hadn't actually adhered to both ends of the paste, so it's, it'd flip around, you know, service tension. So I'm hoping that if I can get these bedded in a little bit like that, Service tension might be a bit better. Yeah, if I can get this one the right way up, it'd be great. Come on. Yes, I'm being fussy about orientation and making them all the same way. Because why not? Alright, let's get the other ones. So these are the other resistors we're using 1.05k, 0.1% as well. Oh, it's got resistors here, all off. Out of camera shot, unfortunately, but I've got them all here. The same thing here, bed those all in. Right, that's what I was in. Now, I also got to put in R21, which is just here, which I believe to be 1.2k in series with my trimmer here. So I need to get, I don't actually have a precision 1.2k. So I'm going to be using a standard one for that, but I'm hoping it doesn't matter so much because it's within the chain and it's only there to influence these other ones, so it shouldn't be as precise, shouldn't be as critical. I guess I'll find out in the end, but anyway, it should be right. I'll get one. So this is a 1% resistor anyway. My 1206 resistors are 1% resistors. So, well, that's what, that's what the packaging says, but as they are from China, you don't really know for sure, but that's what they're supposed to be. This resistor. Why was it? I flipped it over and still the wrong way up. How's that happen? Alright. So now get a hot plate out. We'll hot plate these, get more position. And then we'll put the trimmers on. 
repair it and see what happens, do some testing. Right, so I've got a hot plate, got the hot plate warming up. Now the tricky thing is, because I already have parts on the other side of the board, I'm not sh quite sure how this is going to work out, but those parts might fall off. I've also got to put it right up against the edge of those, which is here. That's as far over as I can go. So we'll see how we go with this. I'm just going to get that slightly off the edge of the board there. So, you don't have to manually do the IC, I'm not too worried about that, as long as these resistors here go. So, anyway, it's heating up, it won't take long. Alright, so it's warming up, just about there. So I'll put this on, and I'm going to try and do it on there like that, and hopefully have it in shot, and hopefully not the parts at the back of the wall fall off. So I managed to nudge things as it heats up. You can see the fumes coming off a little bit there as the flux is going. It's starting to affect it. It does heat up pretty quickly. So there you go, see it's starting to go. Hopefully everything pops into place like it's supposed to. So these in ones aren't doing so well because the heat's not transferred through. Can go slightly closer with it. I'm just worried about the products, or the um, products, the parts of the bottom of the board. Wait for these to go. That's how those ones going. What about the IC? Is this going to go? The rest of it's done. Just waiting for the IC to go. It's almost done. It's not getting over here, so I might have to use a bit of hot air on that as well, just to help it. Okay. And it's popped in place. Well, kind of, it's moving around, but it's floating, so. Alright. Happy enough with that. Slightly offset though. Can I nudge it back? I'll probably nudge it too far away, so what's going to happen? That's sort of solid. Okay. That'll do then. So the board's still cooling down, so I can't really do much with it yet, but I'm going to get the trimmers, get those on there, we'll get those fitted, and then we can repair it again, actually do some testing, I think. The parts on the back didn't fall off, which is always nice. So, uh, that's good. The offset on that I see is a little bit annoying, but it's not really going to matter. It's only slightly off the pads, but it's it does kind of line up, I suppose. So I'll just give you a little bit of a clean, just to get the worst of residue off it. That's looking pretty good. Let's get these things together. Alright, so I've got some trimmers here. We have a 100k and a 2k. So the 2k goes in here. I thought it was going to sit like the other ones did. Yeah, they do. They sit slightly wonky. Just where they naturally sit. Obviously the pinouts are not exactly the same as the original footprints here. They both sit slightly wonky. That's kind of annoying, but um, yeah, never mind. <laughs> In this case, it actually helps a little because it guides it between those two posts, so it helps slightly in that way. But anyway, we shall clip it over, solder it on. I'm not going to use flux, I'm just going to solder straight on. It doesn't really need flux on a brand new board with brand new parts with decent solder. Um, sometimes you need to. We'll see, I'll probably be proved wrong now. Make sure to write down so it's flush with the board. Having the capacitors at the other end is not helping. Well, they're on. And they are indeed flush on the board. They can't really see it on camera because it's because of the focusing. Anyway, they're in place, they're all straight, it's all good, I'm happy with that. Let's cut the legs off. I don't think I've missed anything. Nothing I don't intend to miss anyway. You know, these optional resistors here, I don't know what I'm doing with those yet. And obviously that capacitor there and this capacitor here, I'm not sure about yet. If I use those or not, I don't know yet. So, not too worried about that. And, right, we're good to go. Let's do some testing. Let's figure out how to hook this up. 
without being a bit too awkward. Right, so I'm set up here. I've got the PDVS2 Mini sitting over here as a 10 volt source, precision 10 volt source. I've put my BM235 into millivolt range DC and I've got my negative here hooked up to the negative of the PDVS2 Mini. So I only have to probe the positive again. Obviously, this, this is a big ground loop and picking up noise and stuff. So I just want to do a verification that the divider section is at least working and looking about right. This is a 1000 to 1 divider. So we need to go 10 volts down to whatever to get 1000. So 1000 of that is going to be 10 millivolts. So we should be getting 10 millivolts on here, in theory. So let's see what we get. Now, if I probe onto the resistor string, was it that unpopulated capacitor just there? Actually, I'll try and flip this around so I can get to it a bit easier. It's a bit easy, hard to do. And let's go onto the resistor string right there. Let's do that. There you go, 10.17. That's looking pretty promising already. Now, the question is can we adjust it down? So, I remember setting this so if you go anti clockwise, it turns it down. So, let's just try this. Let's go anti clockwise with it. It's not much adjustment range, it's getting down. Oh, it's getting better, it's getting quicker. Oh, oh, we're just about there. Can it do it? 10 millivolts, yes, we got it. So, can we go below that? Yes, we can. How much down? So, what are they, 17 before, weren't they? Something like 18? So, uh, 7, 8 down. Stop dropping, so it must be it. 7 down, so it's not quite in the middle of the range. So maybe what I should have done is this 1.2k resistor I've got on here, which is the standard one. Maybe I should have made that another one is precision ones. There's 1.05k precision ones. That would have reduced the resistance on this, which would have dropped the upper voltage. So that would have actually done it. If I just made all these 1.05k's, that would have actually then been much closer to the centre of the range. Being a 2k pot, that would have reduced it by a fraction, so it would have been like 0 0.03, 0 0.04 down, so like roughly, I'm just guessing obviously. But anyway, so it does the range, though. it doesn't actually allow me to tune it to the voltage I want. So that's the passive resistor part, so let's just get this tuned to where we actually want it. And then we'll try powering it up and see what we actually get out of the op amp. And then obviously do the null trimming and stuff like that, so let's turn this back up again. Oh, I'm down to 9 zero now. Hmm, interesting. Alright, put it up. Yeah, 10 roughly and we'll do more fine tuning on my bench meter when I actually get there because obviously this doesn't have the position I need but it's a good starting point right let's try the next stage so I've set this to 0 volts on here once you have this meter here running I've got it hooked up through these uh, Pomona cables now the next thing we've got to do is check for the nulling we'll power it up check for the nulling and see if it will output 0 volts exactly with 0 volts going in with the nulling set. Actually what I should really do is shunt this together so it's a zero volt true zero volt. This does have a very slight offset on it but it shouldn't really matter that much. Then we get a shunt. Right, so there's a shunt installed. I've got my power here somewhere. Here we go. Let's hook this up and see what happens. Does it work? Zero volts. Positive voltage. My power has lights turned on. I'm getting a minus 5.5 millivolt offset. Okay, let's try tuning the null and see if that will work. I don't know which way I've got to go. That's worse. Come on, give me a zero. Can't get a zero out of it. Okay. Well, that's annoying. Okay, so we've got a negative 3 millivolts offset there. Which is what nulling is supposed to deal with anyway. We'll see what range we get on this thing. So, minus 3.3. Oops, slipped off from power supply. This is at 3.2 volts as well, so the voltage input might change that. We'll look at that. If we go all the way the other way, oh, here we go, get 500 millivolts there. So, that's quite a big offset the range. So, I do need to look at the linearity of this. I might need to look at adding a resistor. And those optional resistors got on there back there in order to offset the tuner and maybe stick another resistor across the tuner to reduce the tuning range. So yeah, can't quite get down there. It might be because there's a very slight voltage offset on the actual supply lines. 
possible, isn't it? So can't quite get there. It's off by quite a bit, but we'll see. Here we go. We're zero volts again, and we'll attach the supplies. We know that's turned basically all the right way down. So yeah, okay. It's put basically doing the same thing. About three point something millivolts there. If my connections don't fall out. It's sort of a bit precarious. It'd be better once I get the binding posts all finished and thing mounted in the box. It'd be a bit easier to deal with. But I'll see prototyping is a bit, a bit funny sometimes trying to get hooked in. So let's do that. There we go back to 3.6. Let's tuck and voltage in. So it is indeed offsetting upwards as it's supposed to. That's working fine. And 10 volts. Input is giving 6.47 millivolts output. Now with that 3.6, was it offset I was getting on there? Um, is it was 3.6. That's giving me 10 millivolts output. So the buffer part is definitely working. 3.6 there. All right, exactly 3.6. And you got 6.46. So plus 3.6 is giving me just over 10 millivolts. So yes, that is working. And that's at 3.2 volts. Now what I'll try is I'll change the voltage. We've got to 4.2 volts. And that's changed it slightly. Look at that, it's changing it. So what I probably have to do is run a regulated supply through this. Because um, I don't want the supply output to change. Because that's not what we want. And back to 0 volts, get 3.85. Maybe when I get it centered properly it will be actually be linear. But because that nulling is not quite right yet, I need to tweak that part. But that's alright, it's basically working, it's a good start. So I was trying to figure out why I couldn't get this right, why the trimmer, the offset just wasn't right. So I was trying to, I'll just measure the trimmer, just try and determine which side I need to put those resistors on, right, to figure out, you know, which offset I need to add. That's why I put those little jumper links in there, so I'd cut the link and put a resistor in and offset the trimmer, if I need to. And I was measuring it, thinking, why doesn't this measure right, because it's just not behaving. So let's have a close look and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So here is the negative rail. So I'll put the negative on negative. That's the negative rail here, right? When one comes from that I see on the other side of the board. And now I'm supposed to get a one over there about 1k resistance between the null pins and zero volts, because that's got an internal resistor of about 1.08. Yeah, 1.08k according to the diagrams. We get 941 there. Don't think I've got the trimmer across it, so it will be dragging it down slightly. So I go to the other via here which comes in the other side and get 52k well thinking well how can you get 52k if you've got a 1k across it it must be less than 1k thinking, well, what's going on here anyway so i went back and looked at the data sheet and realized i'd made a mistake yes gasp i'll give you a check in the gasp here you go <sighs> yes made a mistake and luckily it's a simple mistake to fix thankfully now what it is pin 8 isn't the right pin. I should have been using pin 5. Pin 8 is a no connection pin, thankfully. Pin 5 is the other null pin. <laughs> Why I thought it was those two in the end, I don't know. I must have got mixed up when I was doing the layouts or something. I, I, I don't know. Anyway, so that's the pin I need to go to. Thankfully, all of those put a link between pin 5 and pin 8 and actually work because pin 8 is a no connection pin, so it shouldn't actually matter. Yeah, anyway, minor problem. We'll fix that. Right, I've got the meter set up again. I've got the Jumper in there, meters going to the output, millivolt range, power supply is on 4.2 volts. Which I might drop it down. No, I'll wait, I'll wait until I've done natural tuning. So set the positive on the positive, negative on the negative. Let's turn this all the way. Is that doing anything? No, other way. Here we go. That's better. Now it's doing something. a bit weird there though. Okay, let's go. Overload mini volts, really. Okay, so let's get the volts in. So I want to see what the offset range is because I do have that resistor I can put across the trimmer to use the range. 2.2 volts max. Does definitely flop around a lot. That's what it latches, I think. I think it latches up. And then that's like latched to 0.6 negative. Okay, so I think I can actually get enough adjustment range in that middle somewhere. Back to millivolts again. So zero there, so I'll change the voltage. 
and we'll see what we get. There's a little touchy still, I think. Right, let's change the voltage, see what happens. 3.2 volts, and yes, it did offset, so I didn't want that to happen. So, a different op amp might be better for this. Well, it's settling down again, actually. Was it floating a little bit? Oh, no. Let's go through 3.5 volts. Yeah, it's stable, but a long way out. So it's got the 4.2 from 3.5. That's still reasonable. We can go down to 3.5 again, still okay. 3.2, it's dropped off. 3.3, 3.4. 3.4 is not too bad. So 3.5 is there. Yeah, okay. So I actually think that 3.5 volt threshold is like the limit really. Go to 3.2 which is where the battery is likely cut out, it starts drifting off. So okay, that's mostly to do with the op amp I think. The power supply voltage is sort of right at the bottom end of what the op amp can do. But if I go up to say, I don't know, let's do 6 volts, it goes the other way. Um, can't really get maximum voltage was on this thing, anyway, 10 volts. Goes up, goes the other way. So, if I were to do say 8.4 as the maximum, give it a second to settle down, which is two lithium cells in series, obviously. Absolute maximum it could possibly be. Sort of 0.38. If I go down to the minimum, which would be about 6. Point, say 6.3 or so around there. 0.26. So it's still drifting around. If I base it on two lithium cells, so I may need to look at uh, using a voltage regulator on the input of the, the bare cells. I don't know, that's like a 1% difference? Nah, maybe with that. Across the voltage range. So, yeah, I think I need a voltage regulator to keep that nice and smooth. Should be easy enough. Chuck a lot of little 5 volt buck converter in there, something with plenty of filtering. Should do the job. So, what I'm thinking I might do actually is because this tuning range in here is quite sensitive, and what I'll do is I'll step that resistor across the trimmer which is what I provisioned for, to allow to reduce the trimmer range. I mean, the other way of doing this is to actually increase these, say add, I don't know, 20k across each of those other ones here. The ones you're in series, cut those tracks, put 20k's in series. So, I don't know how critical the actual 100k value is. Maybe it doesn't matter too much, whether it's exactly 100k or whether it does actually matter. Because all it's actually doing is pulling each of those lines towards the zero volt rail to, to turn those transistors the internal transistors on in the op amp. The actual resistance between them probably isn't that critical. Right, so I'll show you this. So I'll check the linearity out. I've done some adjustments here. I've put a resistor across that trimmer. I'm going to put a 100k across it, which makes it a little bit less touchy. Still got a huge range, so I'm not sure if I actually need to put some serial resistors on there after all and reduce this tuning range to make it less touchy. But it seems to be controllable enough. So I'm currently injecting 1 volt. If I down to 0 volts, Obviously the resolution this isn't good enough for what I'm doing right now. I'm going to hook this up to my sequence meter in a minute and actually do some precision stuff. A bit more detail. But, you know, it's kind of there, alright? We've got a 1 volt. Get 1 millivolts, what we should be getting there. It's a fraction down, it could be a rounding thing because of the offset. 2 volts. 3. 4. 5. We'll get there in a second, there we go. 6. Got to 10 volts input, 2 millivolts output. As you can see, so it is pretty linear. So it's like one, you know, one millivolt per volt is the actual resolution. So that seems to be basically working. Question is, does it change your plug into a different meter? So here's my siglet meter. Um, this is zero. This shall we? I put the short in here. So it's zeroed. And let's put some power onto this board. It injects in 10 volts still. It hasn't changed, so let's put power on. I want to get untangled the wires. Power on there and on there. You're getting 10.01 millivolts. Great. 
So I'll bring it down to 1 volt. 1.002. Go to 0 volts. And there's that 2 offset. So let's bring this offset down a little bit. I'll try to. See how touchy that is this there? That's very, very touchy. So I'm not quite sure. There you go. That'll do. That's close. So let's do 1 volt. So there we're getting very slightly low there. It's got 10 volts. Now I did adjust the divider trimmer. So right now we're getting a bit of an offset difference there between the well the linear difference. So 10 volts we're getting pretty close. It's sort of there. But there's a bit of noise going on and stuff like that as well. You can see it's drifting up and down a bit. A bit of noise. Go 5 volts. So we're getting 003-ish there. And at 10 volts we're getting 008 ish, so linearity is slightly off. So, what we'll do is trim that resistor array again to the correct level at the 10 volts, and we'll see how the linearity goes after that. But that's pretty close compared to the handheld meter. Right, the difference there was negligible. And this is using giga ohm input. In fact, I can prove that to you too. Over here. Input, 200 millivolt range, 10 gig input. Whereas the EV blog meters, 10 meg input. So it didn't change much between the two meters, which is exactly what's supposed to happen. Let's get slightly more. So I'm just adjusting the resistor divider, try and get exactly 10 millivolts. All right, we'll go for that one. Let's try five again. So we've got 4.99 there, so it's dropped slightly there. So linearity is not quite there. Now I think what I might have to look, do is look at the voltages coming in and regulate that a bit better. So let's do a different voltage. Let's go 3.5 volts. It's 9.95 now. If we go to 4.2 volts, 9.98. So yes, it's changing with input voltage, which I don't want to happen. It is affecting linearity. I don't want that. I want it to be stable. Mm. So what I've decided to do, because this adjustment's a bit touchy for the nulling here, if I change it, I can get it really close, if I change it, you know, even like one turn, it's changing by 100 more than I want to, on one turn, and it's a 25 turn pot. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to change these and make resistors in here, which is fine, I'd allow for that. But what I think I'll do is I'll put some, probably 43Ks in series in these two positions here, right in R22 and R23, I think I'll put some 43Ks in there, and that'll give me obviously 86 total which then means I need um, 14k to complete a 100k system so if I then stick say I don't know 20k across the top or something like that and then use that trimmer there which will then influence that resistor and that should be enough I mean I've got 100k in there right now um, which is going to be too big so if I do all that that should at least keep it around 100k total um, and reduce the influence of the trimmer greatly which is what I want to try and achieve Right, so I put those two in place. I'm just using hot air, obviously. Right, I'm set up, hopefully. I've got four volts coming in. I'm going to have to just look at what voltage you end up using on this thing. Um, have to see. Right, so power going in. We have no voltage coming in from the PDBST Mini. I've got a 8 millivolt offset. Okay, so let's adjust this once I get the trimmer on there. That's much finer control. Hmm. And it shifted off a lot. What's going on there? It's going down and come back up again. Well, that's not right. Hmm. Okay, looks like when I cut the tracks, I didn't quite cut this one right. It's still got resistance, look, no resistance here across that track. This one here is okay, but this one here hasn't. You see, it always bridged, so I have to pull that part off again and recheck that cut. Alright, so I did that arrangement and I was getting a um, plus or minus 5 millivolt tuning range on the nulling, which is still hugely better than the 500 millivolt range. I thought, well, I can do better than that, so I've now swapped this pot out, this little trimmer, I've changed it from 100k to a 10k and taken away that um, parallel resistor. So it's now just this trimmer and those other two series resistors, which are the 43k. And you can see the tuning range here, it's about 1.4 millivolts positive, 
Go all the way the other way. See how fine tuning that is. It's much better. And go all the way the other way down to negative 1.5 millivolts. So it's really fine tuning, which is great because that's exactly what I want for the offset. Really fine tuning. Now, obviously, this will depend a little on the input voltage. So I want to see if that's just changed the sensitivity input voltage as well by doing that change. So let's just uh, try and zero it. This meter's a little bit laggy because, you know, you're talking about very small voltages here. So I'm um, 4.2 volt power supply. Let's go, uh, well, it's 4 volt power supply. Let's go down to 3.4 volts. And it has offset slightly down to 0.1. And up to 4.2 volts. And we're still good. So 4 to 4.2 volts is looking all right. At least on this meter. Obviously, the position's probably not there. We've got to say 3.5. Still dropping a bit to 3.6. Okay, so 3.6 isn't too bad. So it's obviously still got a slight offset there, 3.6. So it's, it's reasonable. So as long as I can keep the voltage kind of right, it's a 3.7. Yeah, so I think even small st voltage variances aren't going to matter that much. A quarter of a volt is going to be fine, I think, as far as offset voltages. Considering that I'm injecting, well, I'm currently injecting no voltage whatsoever. And that's just the nully I'm trying to worry about. Um, let's shove a voltage in, actually. Let's shove 10 volts in. Do the same thing. I'm shoving in 10 volts of 3.7. I also changed that resistor on here as well, that uh, 1.2k. I've now changed that to 1.05k. I was thinking about that because the 1.05k's are 0.1% resistors with good, good temp codes. Instead of the 1.2k resistor, which I had, which is a standard 1%, and uh, much worse tempo, it's probably 10 times worse. I'm thinking, well, actually, I'll swap, swap that out because that'll improve the tuning range slightly and get it a bit closer, and uh, all that sort of stuff. And anyway, so we got that near 3.7 volts, go 3.4 volts. It did drop slightly there, you can see that it is affecting that. So the input voltage does matter, unfortunately. So 4.2 volts here. You can see it's changed by that much. So the input voltage from the power supply is quite critical. So that's 8 volts. If I put this back down to 0 volt supply for the actual nulling. And that's how much is that by. So it's the nulling which is throwing it off, not the input voltage. So it's throwing out the nulling, which is the problem there. But at 10 volts, you can see, look, that's fine. This is purely the nulling which is making that go offset. So the op amp itself is probably okay apart from the nulling voltages. So, yeah, that's a bit of a restriction. I'm gonna have to put a little voltage regulator in here then to keep it smooth. Not a big deal, I'll probably chuck in like a 5 volt regulator, be fine, maybe a little linear regulator. And that'd be fine, like a 78L05, something like that, something small. Not a big deal, it doesn't have to power much. But yeah, so I'm getting 10.31 volts, 8 volts on here because of the nulling offset. Yeah, okay. Right, one more test to prove whether or not my design actually works. So we are hooked up to the supply. I've got 10 volts going into the unit for the actual test voltage. And I've got my voltage power, well, my power supply set at 4 volts to run the actual board. Let's put power on. So we're getting 9.997 out. Might we'll give it a chance to settle and stabilize a little bit and that sort of stuff. Don't think I'm pressing this against my desk as well, which probably doesn't help because it's is a resistive mat, so you know, probably having some kind of effect, plus noise. I mean, talking about really the levels here. In real life, this isn't going to be doing this kind of voltage level. It's going to be doing, you know, hundreds of volts or thousands of volts, you know, or, th or up to a thousand volts, and dividing that down by a thousand to give you one volt. All right. So, obviously, I'm doing is a testing or scaling that sort of stuff. So, what I'm doing here, we're getting this coming out right now. I've got nine nine eight. If I change between ten gig and 10 meg resistance. What happened? Not much. So it goes to show that my design here for the op amp as a buffer is basically working. You can't even really tell when it's on or off, can you? Not really, just by looking at it. It's basically the same, which is exactly what you want, which means the meter impedance no longer affects the readings which is the target of what I was doing, yes. Thumbs up if you like that aspect.
14 millivolt offset right now. I'm not sure what the trimmer is because I was playing it, I think it's in the middle somewhere. So let's turn it all the way one way. It's doing It's actually worse, isn't it? <laughs> I don't know. Anyway. Is that just dropping by itself? I think it is, isn't it? Hmm. This is dropping by itself. That's curious. Why? I know why, because it's a floating voltage, because my power supply is not turned on. Uh, here we go, turn the power supply on. Here we go, right. 